do, do. This is important right here. Hello. Hi. Uh, my name is Kelly Bomber. I talked to your brother yesterday about possibly doing an interview for YouTube video. Uh, we're doing this for free. I'm basically trying to go around um, to save local businesses due to this freaking pandemic. So I didn't know if you would be interested in doing like a YouTube video with us or not about telling us the history of how you started and yeah, how long. I, yeah, I have absolutely no problem with that. Okay, um, cool. Now I do have one question though. Is that Jeff White's art? It is. Okay, get a picture. Okay, so film me saying this, saying this. Okay, so this art here that they're selling, no lie, is my cousin Jeff White. He is another famous artist around here too where he tries to take his art and sell it to local businesses as well. Nifty. That's amazing because I had no idea that you guys sold his art and he's my dad's cousin mm -hmm. and I'm like, that I know is Jeff White's art. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. He's a well-known redware potterer. Yes, he is. So, like, we want to know is how did you first come about your business? Like, how did it first start and why did you start it? Well, we didn't start it. Our grandfather, William Howard Works, did. And he was born in Muhlenberg Township, North Reading, mm -hmm. in 1887. And he was a very business-minded young man. He only was a eighth grade education. But he started out in Reading, working in clothing stores, always liked to look formal. And uh, believe it or not, he had a very independent, uh, forward-thinking younger sister, Grace, who went to what, at the time, Kutztown University was called Kutztown Normal School. Oh, wow. She went there, she got a teaching certificate, and then she said, see ya, I'm going to teach in South Dakota. <laughs> and my grandfather that founded the store followed her out a year or so later. Oh, wow. She left then, after a year, he was there. He liked it, he stayed. My grandmother, joined him, they were not married yet, in South Dakota. They got married in the middle of South Dakota, honeymooned in the Black Hills, and they were there for a couple of years. Then they moved across the state line into northern Nebraska, and that's where my dad was born, and that's his picture up there. And so, the Depression hit in 1930, and they came back, and census records showed that they were there in 1930, but they were or here in 1931. And he saw on the way back from the Midwest a caramel corn shop, mm -hmm. which was a franchise in Rockford, Illinois. Mm -hmm. And he got the idea he wanted to open one in Pennsylvania, it, it, preferably in Reading, where he was from. Mm -hmm. Well, Reading already had one or had a candy store, so he came to Leaven. So we're kind of Auslanders, actually. We, I mean, I was born and raised here, as my whole family was. But um, he came to Levin and he started the store in 1931. And so uh, it was called the Caramel Corn Shop at first. It was part of a franchise. And then my father changed the name to our family name um, in 1970 or so, to Words Candies. Nice. And so um, my father, Graduate, got married and graduated from Lebanon Valley College, and he ran the store after my grandfather's death. Yeah. My grandfather and I, I was, he died in the morning, I was born in the evening, oh, in 1960. Wow. So I never knew him, I wish I would have. Yeah. And then my dad took over, and uh, my uncle, with my dad, uh, he then departed the business to go work for PennDOT in Harrisburg, and so my dad ran the store with support from my mom, you know, during holidays and stuff, um, and uh, ran it until 1986, till my mom died, passed away prematurely. 
And uh, so then us four kids, I have two brothers and a sister, mm -hmm. we took it over in 86 and ran it, the four of us, until 2008 when my sister decided she wanted out of the partnership and divested herself. So it's been my older two brothers and myself um, uh, since that time. So actually, us kids, when you look at the history, mm -hmm. have run the store longer than it, my dad ever did and um, my grandfather ever did. How long were that ball? It's usually the ball. Mr. Roth is always just closed on Saturday? Not always. And I think I think they'll go back to being open. I'm not sure when. We drove to Richland and they were closed up there and then we came back here and then they're closed. And, and like, where in Richland? Do they have a place in Richland? No, but uh, Robert's. Oh, used to be, okay. Drove down there and. Okay. Yeah, um, I'm looking forward to them like getting open again. Um, I hope, you know. I think yeah. I found my mom's I, birthday present. I know they're open on Mondays, you know, when a lot of places are not downtown. So they're the only ticket, right. and people, um, people what? like that. <laughs> <laughs> he, I don't know what he would think if he <laughs> was alive today, and yeah. nor my dad, because they never, mm -hmm. I mean, they dealt with hardship. Right. I mean, my grandfather started this business in the height of the Depression, mm -hmm. and he had to barter with townspeople to get manufacturing ingredients such as sugar and stuff that were in uh, short supply because it was depression and war years and all that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But he made it happen, which is pretty incredible. Uh, and there's a picture of him over in the, the corner, you know, uh, of him behind the counter and, uh, and my father. So it's a, a rare thing nowadays to have a small family-run candy business and we truly are small we have one other store and then we have a uh, an internet site so. okay yeah because i know you guys are located out between lidditz and Mannheim, out in brickerville mm -hmm. and then i know every tuesday you guys are at roots market which is in between Mannheim and lancaster well we're not we're not at roots market but you are correct we have had a shop at brickerville at the okay. shops there at brickerville where the restaurant is right in the corner mm -hmm. in that complex we've been there for since the early 80s. Okay. So we've been there well over 30 years now. Oh, wow. But Roots, we're, we're not there. I thought you guys were. Whoops. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I got my history wrong then in the beginning. So well, I'll just have that at that. Well, right. <laughs> <laughs> Credit for that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. We and, can edit uh, that out. <laughs> yeah, we can. <laughs> just take that two second part out. <laughs> edit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, um, yeah, I mean, uh, and I can talk to any other questions specifically you have rather than ramble. Sure, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, about Mike uh, from Dirty Jobs. I don't know if anybody's familiar with that show or not, but can you tell us a little about him? Like, I know you did tell us about it earlier, but we didn't get it on camera, so if you don't mind telling us that story mm -hmm. again. Well, Mike Rowe, of course, is a well-known uh, global personality with a very good following, and he started the program uh, probably pushing 15 years ago now called uh, Dirty Jobs. Okay. And um, he had a lot of fans, including my older brother, and they wanted ideas at the time. And my brother, uh, they asked for ideas uh, and who, you could email them at the end of their show. And my brother did that and we got a call. Mm -hmm. And so they mixed that in with the trip to Pennsylvania. They were gonna be going to Philadelphia and Schuylkill County as well. So they came here. Uh, they were um, here for about nine hours that day for like a 15-minute spot. And uh, the whole crew was uh, here. And um, he is uh, a trained opera singer, which is why his voice is in demand as well to do <laughs> commercials you know, uh, for TV. I did and, not know that. Um, he's very smart and got a great sense of humor. And so there's a reason that he has a, a good following. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the word has it, they're back out on the road and they're visiting some of their old dirty jobs uh, friends. So you, we just don't know. They could pop in here un, unannounced. Oh my word. We That's didn't cool. close that day. They were in here. We had customers coming in 
um, and uh, everything went fine. And it took mm -hmm. took nine hours for fifteen minutes. Yeah, shoot, that's mm -hmm. that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hollywood's um, yeah, Hollywood. I could tell you, you know, well, lucky number seven or um, lucky numbers actually was filmed in like in my town, Mannheim, with John Travolta and Lisa Kudrow, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they uh, I know they had to work hours on that set. Like even though like a two second shot for a movie would take nine hours to do, if not longer. Just to let everybody know that, because they have to sit in a classroom and mm -hmm. have to study how can they make their character better than what they are on film. Mm -hmm. Trust me, I was on a set of that. That was mm -hmm. uh, that was pretty crazy. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the makeup and the makeup uh, trailer, I'll never forget. That looked like you just walked into like a salon, and I'm like, this is a salon. They're like, yeah, but it's also the makeup trailer. It's like, well, you got to see like these big, like round, like about that size of these light balls just in every single wall just blinding you so yeah that's how they do hollywood <laughs> there was no makeup involved here i can tell you that. <laughs> but uh, they did a professional job and the whole crew was uh like-minded and shared a you know great sense of humor so it was a, it was it was a fun part of our history cool awesome um so okay, so the the redware that I know that we were talking about, honestly, this, I cannot make this up. Um, this is actually my dad's cousin who did this rare this um, red this red rare glass painting stuff. Can you tell me a little bit about Jeff White, my cousin? Like, how did he come to you to say, "Hey, can you sell my art?" Well. It's uh, actually all in the family, as you would say, because uh, his daughter, Willow, has worked for us for the last 15 years or so. And um, it's a unique uh, Lebanon County product. Jeff is a professional, produces um, uh, Pennsylvania Dutch traditional redware pottery. You know, it's made a, well, you'd have to ask Jeff, but my presumption is a certain um, uh, red colored clay product is used and people seek out his uh, product and uh, so you know he made various custom candy dishes for us that say opera fudge or candy and um, he did some mugs for us so we've always had a few of his things on display here for purchase. Do they get do they sell a lot? Um, it, I, it depends what you say by a lot um, you know, I, I, I don't think we have um, people, you know, asking for it on a weekly basis, but, yeah. you know, people that are looking for a unique gift um, can find that here. Yeah. And, you know, every once in a while, and it's probably particularly for the holidays, where people are looking for something unique, that we will sell some of Jeff's uh, red brown. Cool. Yeah, you just taught me something new, actually, because I did not know that one of my relatives worked here at this candy store. To find out that one of my relatives works at a candy store is uh, really amazing to me because who would ever thought there was a connection between this? <laughs> it's a small world, isn't it? It is. It's a very small world. That, that's mm -hmm. so true. Mm -hmm. Very true. Um, my other question to you is, how is this pandemic affecting you? Well, you know, it hasn't um, necessarily helped things, obviously, but um, mm -hmm. we're all kind of in agreement here that we're uh, really fortunate because we um, were only closed one day uh, uh -huh. when we didn't know whether we could be open when this really hit back around St. Patrick's Day. Mm -hmm. So uh, we immediately checked with the state of Pennsylvania to see if we could get a waiver. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, in Pennsylvania, probably due to the power of Her the Hershey lobby, we are considered food. So we're mm. considered essential. Nice. We're also considered a specialty trade store business. Mm -hmm. So uh, we were given a waiver. Mm -hmm. But w what we did was we controlled the door. And then as the policy developed and it did develop you know in phases and things and we've been doing the mask thing and they ask people to wear a mask and social distance um for several months now so long story short is um it's been pretty devastating at brookerville we had a hundred percent loss during the month of april because we were closed the entire month 
Now, uh, mm. over here, we just got through very um, optimistic June and July. We actually did a little bit better than June and July of last year. Mm. You want to awesome. mold that together the last quarter of our fiscal year, which would be April, May, June. We had about a 21% loss, but you've got to take into account the shock of all of this during April yeah. and May. And then people got a little bit more comfortable as we had, you know, a method to our madness. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we would encourage people to uh, live nice life as normal as possible, to do the enjoyable things that you like to do. Uh, we're open for business. Our regular hours for the holidays, we will have extended hours, um, including Sundays uh, 10 to 3. Days till seven. Um, so uh, we just ask that you know our capacity of the store is about uh, four people really if you do the social distancing, mm -hmm. and we have um, uh, a lot of people have phoned in their orders and do curbside or do mailers. So um, we expect that to pick up, and we encourage that, and we can do all the major credit cards and get people. You know, cool. process quickly. So. Nice, nice. Chips, and yeah, you suck on them, and you know, they used to only have like uh, menthol and then they got more creative and that's a variety pack there I think there's licorice in there and I'm not sure what else and I think uh, they used to actually be made in Italy uh, for whatever reason I don't know but they have their fans um, periodically we will sell a bag of those do you make your own candy here we make uh, we're known for our chocolates our caramel fudge and caramel corn. You know, a lot of the bulk items we would not make, but um, and we sell fresh nuts as well too, uh, salted and unsalted. Mm. So, um, but uh, and then we sell a few gift items. You know, mm -hmm. non-edible things. Uh, the tins are popular. Uh, stuffed animals. We got T-shirts. We got socks. We got hats. Um, Redware, you know, like you, you were talking, so mm -hmm. there's a lot in a small space. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. Yeah, it uh, is. You know, even though our capacity is not um, huge, uh, we can process a, a lot of things out of here and serve a lot of people. And to me, it's amazing because, like, the pretzels I know are also local. Um, could you tell me a little bit about the pretzels? The well, Shuey's, uh, the Shuey family, like I said, I believe they've been making pretzels for over 90 years now. I, I think they're a little bit older than us. We're going to be 89 in December. Uh, I think it's yeah. December. And they're, I think, three years older. And, uh, you know, they make uh, several varieties of pretzels. I don't even know all the varieties. We've always, you know... Uh, offered their traditional crunchy salted pretzel, but they make unsalted. Uh, their soft pretzels are very popular mm -hmm. with people. Um, and you know, it's a traditional uh, way that they're made by the family members using traditional recipes. Mm -hmm. uh, and and when they sell out, they sell out, mm -hmm. and you take your chance. You can drive. They have fans that drive from far. Mm -hmm. And they know that they're taking a chance sometimes that they could run out. Um, oh, but they have just been so good to work with because they know we sell a lot of their product and then we do the chocolate coated variety. And they've always been very committed to helping us out with that supply. So we go there. Mm -hmm. We're a customer every week. We buy about, on average, 15 pounds of Shuey's pretzels a week. Wow. <laughs> and then we we uh, bag them uh, as is, and then we uh, chocolate coat them as well. So 
Nice. And when I throw the switch, this will rotate. There's no oil. It's a, uh, hooked to the, a, a source of natural gas and that provides the heat. This thing is probably 20 years old or so. Because uh, time flies. But to me, it's still the new popper. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> we had one before this and it would catch fire all the time. Oh, <laughs> oh geez. Especially at the holidays when you're talking to somebody. <laughs> Not cool. No. Um, and then this would be signage from the early days of the store uh, just to give you a comparison now uh, we sell a, a pound of caramel corn for seven dollars and this was 80 cents and you can see this is the logo of the original chain franchise of the store uh, caramel corn spelled with K's that was a, a, a thing and um, we um, when my uh, the licensing for that came due my father decided because they wanted, I think, something like 30% of the profits to keep the name. He said, we're going to change it to our family name, uh, which is Wurtz. And um, uh, there were people that were worried that we were a different candy company and all that. But they got over that real quick and found out quickly that we were the same, same people. So, mm -hmm. All right. All right, well, we're going to let you take care of this customer. Okay. And then I have one more question, but it'll be off okay. the record. I'm going to see how that pretzel factory is doing. Are you sure? The pretzel what? The pretzel place that he was talking about, the kids, oh. the local kids. Yeah. Maybe we could do a YouTube video on them, too. Maybe. Coming up next. <laughs> <laughs> next stop, Pretzelville. <laughs> Tastes like a Tootsie Roll, huh? Yeah, I guess. No, no, no. Of course, it's by Dirty so Jobs by Mike. Artful with her. So Mike does have a sense of humor from Dirty Jobs after, like he wasn't kidding if yeah. he had to make candy, he could like poop. <laughs> <laughs>